Let me welcome you to the second edition of the Maintenance Analytics Summit here in Stockholm. It's a pleasure having you, DNB GL, with us. Um, Thank you. Before we go on, please uh, tell us more about yourself, your background. Yeah, so my background is uh, I have my bachelor's in mechanical engineering and then I have an experience of around eight years in the oil and gas industry. And I have a master's and a PhD in offshore engineering from University of Stavanger. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my PhD, I had a chance to be a visiting researcher at NASA, uh, that is at the Prognostic Center of Excellence. Mm -hmm. And it was there where I was introduced to this uh, prescriptive and uh, predictive maintenance and how we can use data-driven and hybrid models for that. Well, awesome. That's quite a, a, yeah. a nice exp experience. Uh, your talk today was um, honestly something that it has been touched upon today and something that it's quite looking towards the future, okay? Yeah. Very apt one. Probabilistic digital twins and innovative asset integrity maintenance. So please briefly, just a short recap of what are these uh, twins? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned Bayesian networks and their pitfalls. Yeah. So what I just now spoke of was the probabilistic digital twins, and they are actually a bit ahead than the digital twins. So the whole idea of digital twin is just to capture the information. They don't capture this uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And since we are from oil and gas uh, sector and especially the pipelines, so what is more important than money for us is, is the safety of the environment and people. So we don't want them to fail. And since we don't want them to, them to fail, we want to calculate risk. And when you calculate risks, you have to capture that uncertainty. So that is why you need this probability and the probabilistic aspect to the digital twins. So that is what we try to do. We try to have a marriage of the digital twins with the dynamic risk models. And that is what a probabilistic digital twin is. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one of the subcomponent of the probabilistic digital uh, twin is actually a Bayesian network. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just explained that, uh, I mean, every day when we take decisions, we have this Bayesian thinking. For instance, in the morning, you got up and you saw that, okay, it's not raining, so you didn't bring your umbrella, right? Mm -hmm. So, but now when you'll go home and then you see that it has started to drizzle, so now you'll take an umbrella with you if you go to the bus stop, for instance. So what has changed? Your belief, what was in the morning, it has changed mm -hmm. from not bringing umbrella to carrying an umbrella. Why? Because you found you had a new evidence that it drizzled. Exactly. So that is what Bayesian thinking is, and we do it every day. And the Bayesian networks are just a pictorial way of representing that thing. And advantage of Bayesian uh, network is uh, the graphical representation, which appeals us. We understand the problem. And another advantage is that uh, it can, they can be trained on not only on data, but also the expert judgment. And that is what the talks have been. How do we have the confluence? And uh, the pitfalls you asked of the probabilistic digital twin is that uh, people don't have that much of trust because it is a new idea. Yeah. So the research is not that much, uh, the boundaries of the research are still expanding. So what we presented today, it is just a pilot. It's not a used case in this. So we are trying to sell this to our customers. And once uh, we can do that, then we know that how they work in reality. <clears throat> of course, you, you, you touched upon a bit, but um, why build a digital twin? And how, of course, this aspect, how affordable um, are they? So, I mean, <clears throat> the speakers over here said that if you have a machinery, then you put a lot of sensors on them, right? Yeah. And then you get a digital twin because you are capturing information and you have a digital model in the virtual space. And then you are just trying to get the information from sensors, putting that information in your uh, virtual space, and then you simulate. But that is that may be affordable for them, but for pipeline industry, it is not affordable. Because generally, the pipelines are like 500 kilometers. So you can't put sensors at each wow. kilometer. So that is why what we do is, we try to use this probabilistic digital twin. We just run sensors. We have this uh, instrument, which is which we call as a PIG, pipeline inspection gauge. So we run it from this end, from point A to the point B. And then those sensors are capturing as they are moving along. So we don't have static sensors, what most of the people have in their equipments. We have a dynamic sensor which moves from point A to point B, and it captures information. And this information you feed into this probabilistic digital twin. And with the help of Bayesian networks, then you will run it again, but that will be after two years. Mm -hmm. So you start with a lot of uncertainty. You start with something uniform distribution. And as you are running it again and again, you are capturing more information. So we don't have, as the other guys have, like they are generating data every one second. We are generating data after maybe three years. So that is why we have to use probabilities. 
So mm -hmm. you are, and there is a lot of uncertainty. It, it's again very much depending on the, the company. The company, exactly, the exactly. Space, the context yes. and uh, what is your asset. And are these customers really ready for predictive maintenance? I mean, in my experience, uh, they are not. That is what I have felt. Because, uh, see, most of the customers, <clears throat> what they think, <clears throat> if their competitor is doing that, they want to jump into that without understanding the problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this happens. Because we deal with a lot of customers, and sometimes we see that, yeah, one of the customers, they are really serious about predictive maintenance. But then, for instance, they go to a common conference, and then they see that uh, our company is doing this work for them. So then they also come back. Can you build something what you did for us? So, I mean, you can understand both are into predictive maintenance, but the context or the reason for this is that they really want it, mm -hmm. and the other is just they don't want to be behind. So, maybe uh -huh. they really need mm -hmm. it, and they don't need it, they just, okay, we are also doing digitalization and all that so stuff. Just because it's mainstream. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't want to be left mm -hmm. behind. One last question, Arvind. <clears throat> um, we know the future is changing, but yeah. um, what can we expect in the near future when it comes to this field, innovations? And yeah. So in the near future, what we expect is, uh, as uh, our keynote speaker and the chairman said, that cognitive, cognitive intelligence something. So from preventive to predictive to prescriptive to cognitive. So that is something which is definitely uh, right. we are looking for. Yeah, mm -hmm. That uh, should happen, I think so, <laughs> if we course, deliver the same pace. Yeah. Uh, many things that happened, let's say, 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. These things today, we just imagine. Exactly, exactly. Like mobile phones, LinkedIn, exactly. and Instagram, and all that stuff. We didn't even think of that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Arvin, thank you very much for yeah, uh, being with us, for being a, a speaker, and for accepting to conduct this interview. My yeah. pleasure. Okay, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you.